Okay, we got this uh, 42 inch Vizio. Um, it does have an intermittent backlight problem. Um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn it on for you. Um, this uses five strips, but only three of the five are actually lit. Um, what usually happens, uh, I'll go to the house and it does have a picture with no, with, um, I'm sorry, a sign with no picture, and I'll go ahead and test the LEDs and uh, the one will rejuvenate. Um, but anyway, yeah, as you can see, we do have backlight right now, uh, but actually one of these strips are, is open and it's not lit, and let's, uh, let's show you. And just to verify the model number of this TV, this is a E is an Echo 420-Alpha 0. Okay, so we'll go ahead and I'll pull the uh, back cover off and we'll go to the uh, LED plug. Okay, I can hold my camera steady. Uh, but anywhere there's uh, two different lines. Um, as you can see a yellow and white wire the yellow is the feedback the white is the LED plus uh, one line lights up three strips and the other line lights up two strips and the one with the two strips the line that line is that particular line is open so we'll go ahead and use our handy LED checker and I'll show you Okay, we'll check the first line, red on the white, black on the yellow, 82 volts, steady. I did I also saw the back, I also did see the back lights light up, the back of the TV, and that line is open. And uh, I'm also going to check this with my meter just to show you guys. Uh, you can you can check it with your meter. Put our meter on DC volts. We'll go to we'll turn the TV on. We'll go to the first um, line that's good. We'll go to the LED plus voltage. did power it up the TV is lit and we'll go to the white wire on the very bottom there and that is a steady 116 volts looks like um, and we'll go to the negative wire the yellow the LED minus or the feedback and that is 11 volts okay so that is a voltage drop across each LED um, and it, from 116 to 111 Okay, what's our second line? As you can see, that's reading around 130, 140. It is jumping around. It is not supposed to do that. And then we'll go to the negative side of that line, and you can see it is absolutely open. There is no voltage. And basically, that is what shuts the TV set down uh, in most cases where there's an open line because the feedback circuit. Um, if it's too, if the voltage is too low, the, the, the negative, I'm sorry, if the negative voltage is too low or too high, uh, it will shut the LED circuit down. Uh, but the, of course, this one is staying on for some reason. Double check that, and uh, yeah. Okay, so we definitely do have an open line or an open LED. Bad strip. Okay, so we'll proceed to take this apart. I am going to disconnect my LDVS cable for my driver boards. This one does not use a TCON board, okay? Whatever it needs uh, is on the main board. And um, as you can see, there's going right from the main board a bunch of that metal support. 
to the driver boards. And we'll just disconnect that and make sure there's no voltage going through there. And I'll, and I'll also take off this metal bracket here. This is for our support, for our stand. As you can see, right to the driver boards. We'll just go ahead and disconnect those. You may have to pull that black tape off just to give it a little leverage there. Okay. And then next we're going to remove our outer bezel. There's actually only four screws uh, on the outside. There's two on top and one on each side. Um, there's several screws. It's pretty fairly easy. As you can see, there's one there and one there. And there is actually one on left and right side. And we'll use a number one Phillips bit for those. Be careful not to strip them. And what's supporting the bottom is these little like bracket things. You'll see them. There's two on each side on the very bottom. That's also supporting the uh, outer bezel to the TV. Um, so we'll go ahead and disconnect our infrared detector board and also our keypad controller board which is also connected to the outer bezel only goes in one way so don't worry about it pulls right out and we'll disconnect those little metal tabs tab thingies <laughs> Two on each side, and after we've done that, uh, that will come right up. Now we have these four metal brackets holding our screen in. Uh, there's some black screws on the bottom. I'm sorry, on the sides of each one. Um, and they should pull right up. You also have the screws which you took out, took out of the outer bezel. Um, so don't get those holes confused with the holes for these metal brackets. Always mark mine, left bottom left corner in red. We'll remove all of our screws. And there is also some tape that we have to pull off. Uh, sometimes we'll have to use our scraper tool and just scrape it, just kind of like cut it if it's stuck on too hard. Okay, so we'll just um, remove our metal brackets. After you pull the screws out, they should come right up. 
minus that irritating tape. <laughs> As you can see, I'm trying to pull the tape off. I think they put the tape on there for warranty purposes uh, to see if someone's actually been inside. All right, all those are off. Now it's time to remove our screen. So as usual, we'll um, unmount our driver boards and tape them to the screen. These are fairly easy, just kind of tilt the top of it and then it'll slide right up. Be careful not to crunch, bend, or tear those ribbon connectors. Just tape those to the top of the screen. We'll use some standard, standard suction cups and uh, don't press too hard, okay? And lift that up and put that in a safe place. Now we have our plastic bracket holding on our diffuser screens. Luckily it's only one piece. And uh, you can actually look on the sides and see the little snaps and they'll unsnap it. Use your prior tool or your fingernail or a small screwdriver and they'll come right up. Pretty much that simple. We'll remove that and uh, now we're going to actually pull off our diffuser screens. On this one, there's just two. Remember, the thick one always goes on the bottom, closest to the LEDs. That's what spreads the light evenly. And we'll always mark it because we have to make sure that you put those on the exact way it came off, not backwards. Okay. Now, there's some little notches to help us uh, know that it only goes on one way. Now we've got to our LEDs and we'll just have to remove the white paper and remove those studs, plastic studs. We'll have to go to the other side of the TV and just squeeze them out with some pliers. Uh, unfortunately, two other studs are directly behind the, uh, or on the bottom of the main board. One is on the bottom of the, bottom of the main board and, and the other one is on the bottom of the, uh, it's up under the uh, power supply board. Uh, so we, we'll have to unscrew that and get those off, but it's no big deal. To get some pliers or something and just squeeze them out.
Okay, um, so we've got our studs out, pulled our white paper up, and I'm just going to go ahead and fire it up so you'll see uh, that the two strips are not lit. That is the top strip and bottom strip. That is the line that's open. So we know how we have our bad LED or LEDs on one of those two strips there. Okay, our top strip is actually lit up. Uh, as you can see, one of the LEDs is shorted, no big deal. And the bottom strip does not light up, so that is a strip with our bad LED on it. Okay, the second half of the strip is good. Uh, so we know our bad LED is on the first part of that strip. On the right side. And because this strip does not have any test points, I had to actually scrape the trace um, off, of, off of the uh, circuit board there and uh, just kind of go down and see which one is bad. Looks like that is our bad LED right here. We'll just pop the lens off, recheck it. The top is positive. As you can see, it's reading open. That's kind of weird there, but we're definitely getting an open reading on that particular LED. So uh, we'll go ahead and replace that one and see what happens. We'll take off our little white paper there. You don't have to put that on back on. Um, I usually don't because it, you know, keeps me from um, when I glue the when I glue the lens cover back on. It just kind of gets in the way. But um, I'll just um, <clears throat> double check the LED next to it and see which side is positive, and it is the top part. We'll just use our hot air, um, probably about 350 to 400 degrees. Um, you don't want to burn up the board. And just kind of go back and forth over it for about 20 or 30 seconds, I would say. And it should come right up. Came right off. And there's actually two strikes, two traces um, separated right there. You probably can't see it on camera, but uh, the top part, the top trace is much bigger than the bottom trace. Trying to zoom in my LED. Fortunately for us, the LEDs are the same polarity. The thicker trace is the positive. As you can see, the top part is the bigger trace.
on that bottom smaller thin trace uh, the line is actually going to the side uh, you'll be able to see it once you you know zoom in yourself uh, but I'm actually going to just scrape some of the uh, trace uh, so that way I have, enough, I have enough room to put my solder on there and solder the new LED on there and I also scrape the top part of the trace so I also have enough room for my solder when, when I place it on there This is how I do it. I know I get some people leaving comments. Oh, you shouldn't do it that way, and that's not how you do it. Hey, whatever way you want to do it, um, I, I usually put a flux on there so that way I can just put some, a little solder on my iron tip and just kind of like tack it on there. Um, you can use solder paste and you and uh, use your heat gun and melt it on there. Whatever way you want to do it, it's fine. Um, this is what works best for me. And. Uh, Unfortunately, you're gonna have to be kind of patient with this. Uh, you may not get it right the first time. And I'll just kind of place it on there. Uh, careful, careful not to short the traces out. Um, just put a little solder on, my, on the tip of my iron there. And, Sorry you can't see, but I'm actually trying to tack down each side. <laughs> like I said, you have to be real patient when doing this. Um, actually, what I should have did was just clean, took some solder work and clean the solder off of each side before I did that. But um, I'm not going to show you all that. I'm just going to show you that I did finally get it tacked down evenly. And uh, as you can see, it does light up. Good sign. And so we'll just go ahead and test the entire strip. The strip is labeled positive, negative and that strip is working and we'll go ahead and put some uh, like I say you don't have to put that white paper back on there but you can try it doesn't really make any difference if you just got one LED without it so you're not going to see any difference in the picture trust me As you can see, I can't get it straight on there, so I'm probably going to eventually just pull it off um, so I can actually glue my lens cover back on there. I just use any kind of super glue. Don't use too much. It's going to take a long, longer to dry. The less you use, the better. I'm going to put like a single drop on each of those little studs there. Place it evenly over the yellow part of the LED. You want it exactly center. So it doesn't have to go on the exact way that it came off. You just want to make sure that the LED is center up under that little concave thing in the middle of the lens cover. Okay, um, I guess I'm going to fire it up now. And um, there we go. 
As you can see, we have a few LEDs that are out. Those are shorted. Uh, I'm not going to worry about those right now. You can't replace them. Uh, but this Vizio TV is not known for callbacks. Just place the one LED and um, most cases you're all good. Okay, we'll just go ahead and put it back together. Uh, fortunately, uh, reassembling it is much easier than disassembling it, so pretty quick. Let's put our paper back, put our white paper back on. Okay, do not forget that. Okay. That also helps give it an even dis distribution of light. Okay, we'll put our plastic studs back in there. It should snap right in. If they don't, just take like a, a small screwdriver and just widen the uh, bottom part up so it locks into place when you push it in. Okay, and then we'll, we'll put our uh, diffuser screens back on, same way they came off. Actually, I want to put put the thick one on first uh, because those don't have they don't have any notches in them. Uh, just make sure that it is center. Okay, then we'll put our. Um, well, actually, I'm going to light it up again just to make sure I don't have any spots or anything. I didn't drop any dirt or or anything inside there. All right, looks pretty even there. You know, that's just my camera moving, so no big deal, but it is even. Okay, I'll go ahead and put my other diffuser screen on top. And as you can see, there are some notches on the sides and bottom, and left and right, and it only goes on one way. Make sure that all the notches are in. Then we'll put on our plastic bracket, which also only goes on one way. Uh, make sure that that bracket is fully snapped in on all sides and it's not sticking up or anything. Um, because when you go to put your screen back on, if it's not even, and then put your outer bezel back on, you may crack the screen. Um, so. Yeah, just double check, make sure all the clips are clipped in, make sure it's even on all sides. You see I'm pressing it, making sure that everything is down tight and flush. That is very important. Okay, now I can place my screen back on. Now, this is very important when you put the screen back on. Also, make sure the screen is flush on all sides. Make sure there's nothing sticking up. Um, make sure it is exactly inside of those grooves on all sides. As you can see, I'm kind of shifting it to make sure that it is all even on all sides and all flush. Okay, after that I'll make sure I 
uh, mount my driver boards back in the little notches. Fairly easy. Um, just put in the bottom and then um, just kind of push in the top. And then we'll put our metal brackets back on. Uh, the sides do go on first because of those little notches at the bottom, at the top and bottom. And uh, they only pretty much go on one way. As you can see, the little notches on top of the metal brackets, uh, they should slide right in there. Don't press it down too hard. Don't force it down or anything. Uh, once again, you don't want to crack the screen. Okay, we'll put those in there and we'll put in our screws uh, for the metal brackets, the black screws. I think there's uh, three on the top and bottom and two on each side. I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, just don't put the screws in the hole. Uh, don't put the screws in the hole for that is made for the uh, outer bezel. Um, so I actually just mark those in red just to make sure I don't make a mistake. And, um, Pretty much self-explanatory, right? Fairly easy so far. And then uh, once that's in, I'm gonna go ahead and just go ahead and mount my uh, LDBS cables back to the driver boards and to the main board. Make sure it's all the way in there. You'll see the little notches on the side, so just kind of wiggle it around so it goes in there. Put those two exactly in the spot on the main board. Don't do not reverse them. If you need to mark them with a marker, that's all. Okay, I guess now I'm going to turn it around and get ready to place my outer bezel back on. Put the silver screws back in the outer bezel. Plug in my infrared or remote sensor board there. It also has the light on it also, the indicated light. We'll snap in our control panel.
good thing about this one, we didn't have to remove the speakers because they're pretty much um, mounted in pretty good. They won't slide out, so. And don't forget to put our metal tabs back on the bottom of the outer bezel. Um, that is what supports the bottom of the bezel part of the TV. Two on each end, four, four all together. And once again, they only go on one way, so no big deal. You'll be able to realize that once you uh, take them out the first time. I uh, just screw them back in. Same screws. Uh, I just want to say, uh, guys, before I forget, is that uh, I really appreciate all you guys watching my videos and subscribing. Um, we are now at about uh, almost 8,000 subscribers, uh, trying to reach 10. And once again, guys, I really, really, if I haven't said this before, I really appreciate you guys watching my videos and subscribing. So, uh, must be doing pretty good, huh? So, uh, please make sure that you do subscribe. And uh, much love to the YouTube community. And I will screw our metal stand back on, a metal bracket back on for our uh, stand. Um, and I'm going to show you guys one more time uh, how these TVs actually work. Uh, there must be a feedback voltage on the negative line uh, so the TV will not shut off, or so the picture will not shut off. Uh, but anyway, we'll, we'll double check it again where that line that was working before we're at 117 pretty much same thing 11 volts probably yeah on the feedback line okay and our other one uh, which was jumping around before it is a steady 80 volts and that voltage is lower because it's only two strips on that line so uh, quite naturally and we do have a feedback voltage of 8 volts okay so we are good that's how it should read And, uh, yep, looks like we are back in business. Um, so once again, guys, please don't forget to subscribe. Hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell thing uh, so you'll be notified for any new videos. And uh, Big Dog out.